what's up guys i hope you're all doing okay today i'm going to show you a video of all my fish i'm going to show you how they're all doing here's my clownfish and my damsel now i'm feeding them so one tip about feeding your fish they always look hungry no matter what because that's what fish do and eventually if you feed them too much they would actually explode so don't feed them too much don't let them trick you they always look hungry like whenever you go up to the tank they would go to the top of the tank and you would think that they're hungry, but really they're not. So also if you feed them too much, they're going to, the, there's going to be too much nitrates in the water and that's not good for the fish. So they could a actually die from that. This is my conch. I bought him in my past video. That's a starfish. And this is my hawkfish. He always goes, sits on top of there so I could feed him. Like that, I go and feed them. The clownfish are always the first fish to eat. And then the damsel sometimes comes up to eat. And then the hawkfish, he swims around like he's doing right now. It's very cool how he swims and he goes and eats. He's a very cool fish. He has spikes on the top, actually. And these are my corals. And that's the carpet anemone with the snail right next to it. And that's the anemone. It's pretty much closed right now. I'll show you later in this video the next day how it is. And that's a Condi anemone doing perfect. And that's a feather duster on the right side. It closed. I'm going to show you later. It opened. Guys, so the reason why I bought this anemone is because my clownfish didn't go into the Condi anemone, which is the one on the right. And I'm not sure why, but they also don't go into the carpet anemones. They should go inside. But... So these are my corals, my zoa, and my leather. Once I find a spot for the tank and i'll get it all set up and ready i'll start putting in my corals into that tank so there's a separate tank for them there's my sea urchin and my anemone that you can see right now guys this is actually my bluegill we actually saved it in a lake and now i'm feeding it some pellets as you can see he's doing very well he's active he moves around and we actually got him when he was like half the size. He grew a lot by us. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with it. We're probably going to keep it for now. But we might end up returning it back to the lake that we got it from. I shut off the filter for a few moments so you guys could see him clearly. And now I'm going to show you my next tank. This is the saltwater fish tank that's right next to it. Um, this is the one that I was talking about to put the corals in. It's 20 gallons. And for now, it's just, it was working at one point, but I just um, shut it off. And this is my freshwater fish tank. I have tetras, and that's my sword tail, the orange one. It has like a long tail in the back. And now I'm going to feed them some flakes. They really like the flakes. And you shouldn't feed them so much also because these fish also would actually explode if you feed them too much. All fish are like that. Like their stomach would like burst open because you fed them too much. The next day, and this is the update of all the fish, the anemone, the conch. He really just uh, siphons the sand, so he's just gonna stay there. My horseshoe crabs. All over the tank, I had like a lot. And there's my shrimp. Next to that, on the rock, and another horseshoe crab, um, another hermit crab, my bad. And there's actually a crab right there on the cato. The cato cleans the, uh, takes out the nit nitrates and phosphates from the tank. So there's the crab, and that's my clownfish. And there's a starfish. There's the other clown. And right here is a bluegill. We got it from a lake nearby. And we actually saved him. He's just gonna be here for a while. So this other tank, this is a hawkfish. He's very nice and sort of aggressive. There's a blue velvet damsel.
and there's a condi anemone which the clownfish wouldn't go into because they don't live in the same oceans but this one they should eventually go inside and now this guy is following me so hopefully they go into the anemone it's a nice anemone there's a feather duster and there's a carpet anemone, a very small one. And now the clownfish is coming here. The other clownfish. And my corals all over. And my clam is right there. There's like... And there's another carpet anemone. Hawkfish likes like laying on rocks and stuff like that. Very beautiful fish. And he has like these small spikes on top. So the anemones, they pretty much move wherever they want. Like originally, I put him right here somewhere in the area and then it moved down there. Then it moved to the back. It stayed there for a while. Then a few days later, it came right here next to the corals. And then it came here. So I had to move that anemone over a drop so they don't sting each other. So this is my freshwater tank, as I showed you earlier. There's a plant from it. It needs oxygen, so I put it in bubbles. And there's a sword tail right there. And all the other fish are tetras. I'm probably gonna make a tank for just a sword tail and so they breed with other sword tails. That's how it looks from the side. And this tank is plastic actually. So it's just here temporarily because I needed the glass tank, which is this tank for the salt water, but I didn't put anything in it yet. I'm probably gonna put in all the corals from the other, from this tank. I'll make a separate fish tank just for the corals. But I'm not gonna keep it here because no one's gonna see it here. I'm gonna find a place to put it. And that's it. And there's the shrimp. Originally when we put the shrimp into the tank, the clownfish took it and like bit the shrimp and put, the, put it in the anemone, but then the shrimp like went out of the anemone. And they don't get, really get stung unless their body touches the anemone. If their legs touch them, like they have very small legs, they wouldn't get stung. The horseshoe crab's in the sand, like always. He sometimes comes out. And I have a crab that makes a, a cave, a tunnel underground. So there's pretty much two crabs, that one and the one that's there that makes those tunnels all over. Like he made one there, he made one right over here. All over. So I found a spot to move this tank to. Now I'm gonna take out all the water. First, I need to move this. Okay, guys, we got this. Let's see what we could do. I'm gonna fill it up, and then we're gonna move it. So it's filling up, as you can see. So right here we have the skeleton of a clam. Uh, we didn't have it live or anything. Then we're gonna take it out. We got it for decoration, pretty much. That's another clam. Different type and stuff. This one we got as decoration, as I said earlier. And this is just a rock. So it's getting very close to the top. Probably gonna stop it from once it goes up to here. 
tank is up to there. Guys, look how clear the water is. Okay guys, so I moved the tank over. And now I'm going to fill it up. I'm going to keep the tank cycling for a while. And then I'm going to end up putting uh, in all my corals and adding some. Thank you.